Oh boy, the new PS5 model will have a disk drive, so you can play all those CDs. Physical media isn't dead. That's what we'd like to say. But Sony has revealed that to use the optional disk drive, you need to connect the system to the internet so that it can pair with the system. As opposed to, you know, just being attached to the system through a cord. I'm sure there's a reason for this, but it's also probably not good. Anyway, I'm Ellie, and this is Booster, and welcome to Necro News, the show where we cover the hottest gaming news from the last week. Be sure to subscribe to us to keep up to date on the latest gaming news and other weird stuff we find. So, I've spoken about this before, but I don't really like the Insomniac Spider-Man games. Mostly for mechanical reasons, but there's other reasons too. However, it seems more people are starting to hate on the current Spider-Man 2 game for a lot of good reasons. This is a flag in Spider-Man's home. Spider-Man's mom is Puerto Rican. Do you know what flag this is? That's right, it's Cuba! So if all of you knew this, then why didn't Insomniac Studios, the developer of the game? Well, that's not the only thing pissing off fans of the game. It seems that any reference to the LGBT community has been removed from the Middle Eastern version of the game, leading many people to believe that any sort of representation is just a tactic to make money. This theory is further compounded by the fact that Final Fantasy XVI specifically did not release in the Middle East due to the gay relationship that was prominent in the cutscene in the game. One that Queen Inks felt was important enough to leave unaltered. But that's not all. It turns out that Spanish streamer Rubius has publicly denounced the game for using non-gendered Spanish, effectively butchering their language. And as you can imagine, the Latin community has been largely insulted, much like when Bungie did this. Squared is a neat little internet game where you place random letters in the grid to form as many words as you can. It's a simple puzzle game, much like Wordle, and one that many people have enjoyed. People enjoy it so much that many sketchy spam sites re-host the game on their own spammy websites in an attempt to drive traffic up in order to collect revenue from clicks. The game's creator, Josh Simmons, is furious about this. According to him, he only made the game for fun and as a passion project between him and his friends. Because of this, the game is purposely ad-free on the game's website. He's taking the matter even further, and for any site that embeds the game in an iframe, the game will display Goatsy and the text, I steal other people's code because I'm a total hack. So if you want to play the game, best do it on the game's website. And because Goatsy is gross, if you don't know what it is, we do not recommend looking it up. However, if you need to know what it is, this image from Bioshock should help fill in the blanks. And no, we will not be elaborating further because YouTube. Okay, I'll admit it. Monkey Game is bad, but it's not that bad. It's certainly better than Todd McFarlane's Evil Prophecy, especially since the game was only in development for a year. And no, that's not an exaggeration. From an interview with The Verge, the developers of the game started on Skull Island in June of last year with a planned end date of June of this year. This gave the Chilean indie company Iguanabi literally a year to develop a game. Why did they only have a year? You may be asking yourself while drinking a nice cold colada. Well, it's simple. Money! Though, less simply, it's this company, Game Mill Entertainment. You see, Game Mill has a bit of a reputation for contracting indie companies to pump out a game based on licensing in a very small amount of time, often underpaying and underinforming the developers they contract. In fact, they've even commissioned Iguanabi in the past to create that Little League World Series games that we talked about in the last video. Think of Puppy Mill, but instead of cute puppies, it's game developers. So with all of that being said, it was obvious the team at Iguanabi did the best they could, though some have stated that they were going on autopilot in February because they lost hope in the game. To make matters even worse, some staff were even let go because they didn't get enough funding to keep everyone on the team. Unfortunately, no one at Iguanabi can really speak up about it because, as they stated, it's a love-hate relationship because Game Mill are the ones who accept or give the projects and Iguanabi doesn't have the means to develop almost anything on its own because, well, money. So with everything considered, Booster and I have decided to go back to our VTuber roots and we'll be streaming Skull Island to give it a fair chance as a game that was developed in under a year from a team of less than 20 people. Iguanabi, if you're watching, you guys are rad and you made a better game in under a year than Yandere Dev has made. Ever. So yeah, good job Iguanabi for all of Skull Island's faults. You did your best and that's really all anyone can ask of you. Nintendo decided they wanted to shit on fans. Again. 
Last week, they published new community tournament guidelines and judging from the QRTs on Twitter, or X, whatever you want to call it, fans are not happy. Notably, changes include that all community tournaments must be nonprofit, have no more than 200 local participants or 300 online participants. Entry fees for participants can be no greater than $20 and $15 for spectators, as said fees can only be used to cover the cost of the tournament and prizes. Tournaments are not allowed any sponsors and cannot suggest that Nintendo has endorsed them, going so far as to disallow the use of Nintendo's IPs to promote the event outside of using gameplay from the games that have already been launched and are available in their region. But they'll make f***ing rules for it, isn't that right, Nintendo? You f***ing pat- mm -hmm. Tournaments also can't sell any food or drinks. And merchandise. And those were only some of the changes. The full list will be linked in the description, but it's also worth noting that Nintendo banned the use of any accessories not licensed by them. That includes fight sticks. Someone did note that Capcom tried the same thing when Street Fighter V came out, but quickly backtracked when the community let them know that they hated the changes. But this is Nintendo, and we all know. That was Capcom, though. If the shoe fits. What Nintendo? Anyway. This mostly seems to affect Smash players, so if anyone watching is part of that scene, let us know what you guys think about these changes in the comments. Also, as someone who was super into Splatoon, are there any Splatoon tournaments? Let me know about that too. Moving on, Riot Games has seemingly stolen fan-created works and are passing them off as their own in their game Wild Rift. What? A Tencent company doing something wrong? No way. These two specific new icons for Wild Rift caught the eye of Twitter user Zingling Ren, who pointed out that the icons look like traced or heavily edited images of these two fan works. Another user named Pikamu took the liberty of overlaying the two original images with the portraits to find that they were basically the same image. Pikamu also revealed that neither of the artists were asked for permission, cementing the fact that Riot effectively stole these two images. Or at least, that's the best case scenario. Another, more sinister theory is that Riot is taking all the fan art that they like from all of the artists that make them and feeding it to an AI. I don't have a single fact to back this up, but I'd believe it. Nintendo did it first, and now Riot's doing it. Is it within their right though? Let us know what you guys think in the comments. This week's Buried Alive Banger, a segment where we cover a game that our community doesn't think has had enough attention, is Spookware. Spookware is essentially WarriorWare, but everything is, well, spooky. It came out in 2021 and has been featured on channels such as Alpha Beta Gamer, but with only 561 reviews on Steam, we think it's worth highlighting. Give it a go since it's on sale for only $6 this week. And here are all the games coming out this week. Lots of good ones. Talos Principle 2, Robocop, WarioWare, Fashion Dreamer. Fashion Dreamer! Are we, are we buying that? Yeah. Yeah. I can live out my style savvy Life? dreams. Life? Okay. All right. And here's our schedule for this week. It's Halloween on Tuesday, which means I'll be playing Spooky's House of Jump Scares by myself over on Twitch with noise alerts enabled so you guys can scare me even more. God! <laughs> and that's it for this week's news. If you like what we do here and want to keep up to date, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. It really does help our channel grow. If you stuck with us this far, we thank you so much for all of your support. And an even bigger thank you to all of our channel members. If you like our content and want to support us even more, consider joining. That's all we have for you guys this week. So until next time, goodbye. goodbye.